we'll so uh, we were discussing tangential and linear velocity at the time so i think that's what we did the last thing was uh, discussing this thing so is is this uh, is the concept of tangential velocity clear all right so uh, uh, i'm guessing it is clear uh, then we discussed this point that uh, the angular velocity is going to remain same throughout the circular motion for the body that is in this circular motion so at this point there it has it is moving with some angular velocity omega at this point it will also have that same angular velocity omega right however the linear velocity if i increase the radius of my string then the linear velocity changes essentially basically it increases right okay so now a body that is moving in a circle at a constant speed changes velocity why well because velocity is not just a magnitude it's just it not it's not just a number it also includes direction so when a body is moving in a circle at one point its direction is uh, you can let me draw a circle and i think it's pretty obvious right so at this point that the direction if it's moving if it's moving in this angle its direction is this if it moves if it comes to this point its direction is this and so it keeps changing its direction if it's moving in a circle right so that's pretty obvious and hence the speed is not constant it's uh the velocity is changing because uh the direction is changing and hence it's always experiencing acceleration is this point clear uh, i guess it's pretty straightforward so because it's changing a direction there will be some acceleration experienced and we'll look at that acceleration uh it's uh, known as a rotational acceleration or a centripetal acceleration right and if there if there is some acceleration then because of f equals m a there will be some change uh, uh there will be actually there will be a force being exerted on it and that is the force that we call a centripetal force it's not really a force centripetal force it's not really actually a force it's just something that is trying to keep the body uh, towards the center move in uh, move towards the center right okay so uh, are you aware of this expression that force is the rate of change of momentum so it's a uh, change in momentum time rate of change of momentum so you can you can see this expression because we know that momentum is defined as mv and f is ma but what is a a a is v over t so i can put in place of a i can put v over t so this becomes mv which is momentum p and then you have t so if there is some acceleration on the object then its momentum is also changing right okay so centripetal acceleration is given by this expression it's a is equal to r omega squared where omega is the angular velocity of the body and r is the radius from this body to the center of the circle and it's also can be written in terms of the tangential velocity so this v is the tangential velocity uh using th this one we, because we know that uh, using this expression if you can see it clearly let me get rid of these circles so this is v equals r omega you can use this expression to write down your centripetal acceleration in terms of tangential velocity so is there any uh, question up until this point no sir okay so because i think that we are moving a bit slow so i'm just trying to go over some things which are uh, 
which are not so uh, hard to understand. I'm trying to go over them quickly, but if you think that th that is causing some problems, uh, you can let me know, right? So if, if again, my point is that if any, at any point uh, you have a question in your mind while I'm going through things, you can just stop me and ask me, right? So now, because we have something that is the centripetal acceleration, you can define centripetal force using the same thing that I explained, this, this same concept because F equals MA. So just multiply a mass with this acceleration and you can work out for force, right? And so the force is F equals M times R omega squared, where R omega squared was this acceleration. And similarly, you can use the tangential uh, velocity representation of the acceleration, and you can write down V square over R in place of A over here. And so you get the centripetal force as this. Now, again, uh, this is the same point that I was stressing about that centripetal force, it is a resultant of all of the forces that act on the system in circular motion. So it's not just a particular force that is trying to uh, make the object, uh, or it's not really a force that is forcing your uh, object to move in a circle. It is just, as you can see, it is just center seeking. So it, it seeks to keep your object towards the center of the circle. is by this expression, as you can see. And uh, then there is a statement, uh, think about it. If uh, you, you know that a person in a satellite, when it is orbiting Earth, they experience weightlessness. I'm sure that you're uh, familiar with this uh, phenomena, right? Sir, can you explain the phenomena? Uh, the, uh, the phenomena of weightlessness, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, basically what happens is when you're, uh, when you're orbiting, you're constantly falling towards the earth, right? But what, what happens is that you're uh, moving, you're orbiting the earth, so you're moving with some velocity, and because you maintain that velocity, that's why you're not falling to the earth, right? But, okay, but yeah, but but what's happening is you are you are indeed uh, you are continuously you're falling towards the earth. So have you uh, have you ever uh, felt when uh, I don't know if you, uh, hopefully you have not felt it. But what happens when uh, if if an elevator was moving and suddenly this uh, thing that was keeping the elevator it it well, it ruptured or it broke or something, what would happen to the person who is inside the elevator? Sir, for a little time, he would float. Yeah. So basically he's falling uh, to the, he's falling, he's still falling down, but with him, this, uh, his, this uh, elevator is falling down as well. Right? Yes, sir. So what is happening is that the uh, and the 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 weight of this person is in this direction. But what uh, what happens when the string breaks? Uh, the effect of this weight or the effect of the gravity is eliminated by the forces that are resulting from. Uh, for example, if you consider this uh, case. Uh, the case of this earth and a satellite orbiting the earth, it would be eliminated by the uh, resulting forces from the orbital motion. So it is just uh, that the, uh, the uh, what do you call that? The gravitational force appears to cancel out and hence you experience as though that uh, there was no, uh, there is no weight, but that's not really the case. Yeah.
is that uh, is that okay yes sir okay so so that this now i have also prepared some uh, questions uh, let's let's move on to those questions uh, the problem is i really like the timing uh, to be shifted because uh, for me it's too late right now and i'm exhausted <laughs> at this point so hopefully at, from tomorrow the timings will be different they'll be more uh, towards uh, the afternoon somewhere around, around about that because uh, this uh, this thing it's uh, it's very exhausting like this at this uh, time hopefully none of you will have any issue with uh, with the time if that's okay then i would really like the timings to be a bit early is that uh, is that okay with everyone present in the class right now yes sir but only the issue of chemistry class clash clash should not be there right yes yeah so yeah of course so keeping that in mind uh, hopefully there is some slot where we can make this a bit early uh, can you just uh, tell me about your uh, schedule about the classes that you uh, you are taking so right now the chemistry classes are not happening and i am taking physics and chemistry you are taking physics and chemistry okay 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 amazing so so i'll keep that in mind and i'll arrange the timetable accordingly okay let me open this uh, okay i think it's here let me share the screen once again uh you can see my screen now yes sir all right so here are some uh problems let me just zoom it in so these are very, the first problem is uh, very basic let's start uh, we have uh, this thing that we have to convert the following angles into radians and so i'll just do one or two and then i'll send you this worksheet and you can attempt the rest uh, by yourself as well right so because the pattern is uh, the, the same to solve these all of these parts so we have to convert angles to radians Uh, he should have mentioned from degrees right so because these all of these angles are over here in degrees so the relationship between a degree and a radian is defined as pi radians is equal to 180 degrees so there is no problem with this right okay so so you'll just use uh, that 180 degrees is just pi radians what about 90 degrees so if pi radians is 180 degrees then 90 I degrees to, yeah exactly so because you would get 90 uh, by dividing 180 by 2 so you divide both sides by 2 you'd get pi by 2 and uh, similarly how, how would you get 60 60 would be okay so it would be 60 multiplied by 1 upon 3 2 pi yeah exactly so 2 pi by 360 so that would be pi upon 3 radians and similarly for 45 it would be pi by 4 so i think this is very easy uh, nothing uh, no rocket science over here uh, similarly you can convert uh, the these angles into degrees using the same relationship over here we have pi by 4 pi by 4 we well luckily we just did it over here so we know that it's 45 degrees right so you'll just write 45 degrees 2 pi by 3 so what you do is you'd have 2 pi by 3 into 360 by 2 pi or you can say 180 by pi right so 120. pi pi goes yeah exactly so it would be 120 degrees and one radian would be how many degrees 180 that's 
Uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, it would not be 180. Think about it. It, it. We had pi radians as 180, right? So, but this is one radian. Well, pi is actually pi is it's a never ending number. It's 3.142, blah, 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 blah. But it's, it's, it's this thing, right? It's not one. So you'll have to uh, do the conversion by simply uh, one multiplied by 180 by pi, 180 degrees by pi radians, right? And so this would give you, uh, well, there is a radian over here as well. So this radian, radian goes away and this is just 180 by pi. So if I were to do this, it would give me 57.3, yeah, exactly. So, so actually this was interesting. One radians is 57.3 degrees. All right, so well, the, the, these were very easy. Uh, let's look at this question, question number two. And it says that you have a car which is traveling around a circular bend of radius 24 meters at a constant speed of 15 meters per second. So the situation is something like this, that there is a car now, Hopefully you'll not judge my drawing. Uh, this is a circular bend. Let's just use this. And there's a car which is traveling on the circular bend in this direction, let's suppose. And this circular bend has a radius from some center, it's 24 meters, and it's moving at a constant speed. V is equal to, now look at the units for the speed. It's meters per seconds. So the, this has to be a tangential speed, right? So V is equal to 15 meters per second. Did you get that point? Why, why, did, why did I not write omega equals 15? Because omega, uh, omega is not meters per second, right? It, omega is the angular velocity, which is measured as radians per second, right? So this, these are the units for omega. It's because it, it's the angular velocity, right? As we discussed in the notes. Uh, I think we did, we did that in the last class. But it would be degree per second. Yeah, it, it can be degree per second. It can be radians per second. So any uh, unit that is associated with angle. Similarly as how uh, kilometers per hour, meters per second, these are all units for uh, velocity, right? Uh, uh, ra tangential velocity. Similarly for angular velocity, it could be radians per seconds. It could be degrees per seconds. It could be, uh, th there's another unit called gradient uh, per seconds as well and so on, right? So, so the point is that you get this, uh, why, is, why did I write tangential velocity as 15 meters per second? So that's clear, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so then they're just asking you to compute the angular velocity of the car, which is extremely simple because we know, we know radius, we know the value of R, we know V. What is something that connects uh, V, R and angular velocity, which is omega? So we have omega, we have V, we have R. Just quickly think about an expression which connected all of these three. Can you, can you tell me right now? from what we did in the like in the theory part of this chapter sir r v square upon t uh, r v square upon time time uh, and you're saying that this would give me omega uh, no sir it was uh... It's okay, it's okay, no problem. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, but you can check that, right? You can also check uh, these things by uh, using dimensional analysis, which just means that you can check the dimensions on both sides. If the dimensions match, then you're uh, good to go. Uh, but if they don't match, then there's a problem with an expression. So if you look at this expression, you can see that there is V squared, which means meters per second squared. And then you have R, which would mean one meters. And then you have time, which is seconds. So this would just give you meter cube over second squared divided by second. So this thing goes, so this gives me something like meter cube per second. But these units don't work out with, uh, with omega, right? So these units don't work with omega. We know omega is what? Omega is uh, radians per second. And I need a relationship between omega, V, and R. So 
think about this. What about this expression? Uh, v is equal to R times omega. Sir, wasn't this a linear velocity? Yeah, exactly. So this part is linear velocity. You're, uh, you're absolutely correct. But what I can do is I know R, I know linear velocity. I need to compute this. So I'll just rearrange this. I'll just take R to the left. So I'll get uh, V over R as omega. Now I can put the values of V and R in this expression and evaluate my omega, which is the angular velocity. So is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So in place of V, we have 15 meters per second. So I'll just put that in 15 meters per second. R is 24 meters. So let's just put that here. And then we have this meters, meters cancel out. You're left with 15 upon 24. It's 0. 0. 0.64. Yeah, 0. 0.64. Okay. 0. 0.64 uh, per second, right? So you can write now, you can put radians per second. So that's your angular. Uh, angular velocity, which you were asked to compute. So that's uh, what you had to do in this problem. And we're done. So is there any question uh, uh, regarding this problem? No, sir. sir can uh, you, you should share, under the... share, share, share these notes? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, of course, I, I'll share these notes after the class is over. Uh, by night time or hopefully, uh, but by tomorrow you will have these notes. Right? So, so uh, the, the real question at this point is, did you understand why I did what I just did? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect, perfect. So then, uh, okay, so let's move on to, okay, so now this, is hell of a problem. It's very simple. It looks, it might look as if it's not, but it's pretty simple. So uh, let's read it first of all. We have the diagram shows a racing car rounding a bend of a radius 120 meters. So we are given a radius of the bend and on a banked track traveling at 32 meters per second. So the track is banked at some angle. That's what a banked basically means that it is inclined at some angle, right? And the, this angle is phi. And we're also sir, given the, uh, yes, sorry? Uh, sir, can you label what would be 120? Uh, oh, you mean uh, the, the radius, uh, this thing you're talking about, the radius of the bend? Yes, sir. can you label it on the diagram? Oh, yes, of course. So think about this. It's traveling in a circular path. Uh, on this diagram, it's not really. So it's some, it's, think, think of a circular track. You have a track that is circular. And if something is uh, bend on that circular track, what would the radius uh, R be? It would be, uh, okay, so it's something like, it's, it, this thing is going to move in a circle. Right, so, and it's going to, so I'll have to draw something like this. Let's get rid of this thing. And uh, so it would look something like this. Uh, you know that uh, racing tracks are designed in this circular form, right? And so the car starts from here, it will uh, cover, go like this, go like this. And when it comes back to this point, one lap is completed. Yes, sir. Right. So exactly in the same way, it's moving along this path and it's but but this path is banked at some angle. So from the center of the car to the center of the track, that's the radius R. Uh, you have to picture it in your head. And uh, if you can do that, uh, that's very that would be very nice. But if not, I'll try to elaborate a bit more. But. Is, but is it okay? Is it okay or it's not? It's okay, sir. Okay, perfect, perfect. So that's your radius and it's traveling at this speed, 32 meters per second. 
So that's what the, uh, what speed would that be? The angular tangential. Uh, it would be tangential, right? Uh, can you uh, take some time and think about it? Why 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 would it be the tangential velocity? Think in terms of the units. That's always very helpful. So it, it, tangential is something, it, it means linear velocity. Linear velocity is always measured in, uh, in these type of units, right? Meters per second, kilometers per hour, and uh, like uh, these, these type of units are used for tangential velocity. Because it's, there is no, it's not an angular velocity, but if, uh, angular velocity, the name says it, that it has to involve the units of angle. So it should be either radians per second, degrees per second, and something like that, right? But you can see the units over here, they do not involve any sort of angle. There is no radians, there is no degrees, nothing like that. It's just meters per second. Meters is a tangential thing. Hence, uh, so these are the units for tangential velocity. Uh, is that, uh, is that, uh, does that make things clear any better? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect. So always uh, it, uh, look at the units. And if uh, if you know your units, uh, it's very easy to recognize uh, what is what, basically. So uh, I'll just give you an example over here. Uh, sometimes I don't remember. I, I find very hard to remember or memorize uh, formulas, expressions, and everything. So if I, so if I, don't remember some expression very uh, correctly. I'll just uh, I'll just check the units on the left hand side of the expression and on the right hand side of the expression. If they match, that means my guess is correct. If they don't match, that means uh, there is some problem. So it's always uh, nice to know your units. You can uh, it saves you a lot of times basically. So so let's uh, let's uh, get back to the problem a part they're asking you to calculate the angle phi if there is no tendency for the car to move either up or down the track. What does this mean? This means that the car is not allowed to move above, up on this track or slide down on this track. It will not do that. It will just stay, it will just stay in this position and it will keep moving in this position only. So the car is not moving either to the left or it's not moving either to the right on the track. Uh, is, that, uh, is that point clear? Yes, sir. Okay, so now uh, they're saying you may treat the car as point object. Uh, well, you do that all the time when you're doing any calculations. Uh, you treat your objects are always treated as point objects because if you don't, then you have to involve, a, then your calculation gets uh, really messy. So we treat things as point objects. So anyways, uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What does point object mean? Oh, it just means, uh, well, there is no such thing as a point in real life. In mathematics, we define point as something that has no uh, distance or no, you know, no size. A uh, point object is just whenever you're doing physics, it's very, it's, think about this. If you have, uh, if you have this car, there will be some weight coming from the tires there will be some weight coming from the person who's sitting in the car, right? And there will be some weight coming from the bumper, the front bumper of the car as well, the back bumper, then the seats, then every. So we don't we don't say that we don't include all of those things separately. We just say we just treat it as a point mass. So we say that this whole thing is a it's like a point and it has a weight, and that weight is the entire weight of the car, which. You can, you know, by adding all these weights from the tires, from the chairs, from the, uh, uh, by chairs, I mean the seats in the car, the steering wheel, the bumper, all of those things, right? They would be giving, they'd be contributing to weight. So, so all, we don't treat all the them, yeah. We don't treat them separately. We treat them as a point mass. And we say that everything is concentrated on this point and uh, this this point then has some weight or mass, which is weight is pointing in the downward direction, and yeah. So is that clear? Uh, that does that make this uh, point clear? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, uh, bef 
before I proceed, can you let me know how much time is left? Uh, four minutes meeting? and 40 seconds. Four minutes and 40 seconds. Let's try to get, solve this problem in that time. Uh, there's still this problem of uh, time, is the fixed timing on this uh, Zoom. Uh, it will. They're telling me that it will be fixed very soon. So let's hope that tomorrow it's uh, it's fixed, right? And so we'll not have this issue as well. Okay. So, right. So, so we, we you may treat the car as a point object. So let's try to solve this part A first. Calculate the angle. So we have to com uh, compute this angle phi. Now to do that, uh, you are uh, familiar with resolving. Uh, force or way force vectors into components, right? So for example, if you have a force vector that is pointing like this and your coordinate system is defined as this, where this is your vertical axis, let's call it Y, this is your horizontal axis, then a force vector in this coordinate system, for example, it's like this, it would have some component along this direction and it would have some component along this direction as well. Uh, sorry, this would be FX, right? Uh, do you understand this thing? Or should I go into uh, detail? Oh, no, this? sir, I understand. Right? Yeah, so, okay, amazing. So basically, you have a force that's pointing like this. So how could it point like this? Your coordinate system is telling you that the only in two, there are two independent directions. One is up and one is right. Now, every other direction that we make, we can make out of this up and this uh, right in this specific figure, right? In this specific coordinate system. So we can, we can make this now, but this vector is a combination of up and right. And similarly, how I made this force, F vector, it's a combination of this up and this right. So this up and right, these are basically uh, how much contribution is in this up direction is the fy component. How much contribution is in the right direction is the fx component. So anyways, you, you said you understood it. Uh, I, for some reason, I, I went on into it anyways. Uh, but okay, so if you look at this diagram, they have given you this diagram, they have resolved the forces as well for you. So if this is the angle phi, then this is the cost component of this vector r. R is the resultant force, right? And this is the sine component of this uh, vector R. So then you can do this thing. You can say, uh, it, it, by the way, when they said that the car is not moving uh, either on the up of this track or below, sliding down the track, they meant that the car is basically in equilibrium. So that means that the uh, vertical, some of all the vertical components of the force should be zero. And some of uh, all the uh, horizontal components of the force should be zero. So let's try to solve this vertical components. So we have R cos phi and M times G. These are on the only two vertical components in this entire diagram. Would you agree with that? Uh, hello. Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Would you agree with this that the, there are only two uh, vertical components in this entire diagram, R cos phi and W equals m times g? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. So there is no other uh, comp. There is no other uh, component that is in the vertical direction, right? So that means R cos phi is pointing up. So I'll take it plus R cos phi. And W equals mg, it's pointing down. So if if I take up direction as positive, that means that my down direction is negative. Now this thing is a complete choice. You can pick one. You can say that you can you could have even taken up as negative and down as positive. But whichever you choose before you start your problem, you have to as you have to like you know stick 